we're jumping right back into this. I could not wait. I'm actually supposed to be at work in like an hour, so I'm at least going to try to get at least 30 minutes in. So, jumping right back into this. Soul leads me to the ship's lounge and cafeteria. I'm not expecting much from it. Synth food is synth food. But anything to soothe my gurgling belly is welcome. Welcome to the ship's lounge. It's all ranks since. Watch out! All I can see in front of me is a black boot whiz past my face. It passes so close and so fast that I can feel the wind rushing across my hair. With a mighty tug, Sol grabs me by the back of my uniform and yanks me back. He pulls so hard that I stumble and almost slam against the wall of the hallway. A mere millisecond later, a large green tail slices through the air where my head used to be. Before I can react and determine what just about took my head from my shoulders, Soul storms forward. <laughs> oh, she's so cute! <laughs> Damn it, Zuri! How many times has Commander Rasuna and I ordered you not to practice your fighting garbage in the lounge? Wow, Soul, you've got pretty good reflexes. I've had to develop them because of you. Answer the question. I don't know. A couple? Twenty-seven times. Don't you have anything better to do than remember random numbers like that? I wouldn't have to if, I, if you stopped trying to kill people. Oh, hey, who is she? The superior officer you about murdered for committing the horrible crime of just entering the room. Huh? Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here are you. Wow, she is like all kinds of just, yeah, whatever, she's alive. Now that she's settled down, I can get a better look at the woman with such amazing speed. She's a, oh, what are they called again? Do you have any remembrance of the Academy? What is the proper procedure for introducing yourself to someone who outranks you? Come on, she's not in my chain of command. We don't have to be quite uptight, right? Long ears, green tail would tell me that she's an elf, but elves don't have wings. Probably she could be an Afric like Stan, but Africs don't have shiny, scaly tails. She's a fucking dragon! Wrong! I don't care if we're crew dogs or not. We maintain the data command of respect during all phases of operation. But I'm off duty right now. What does that have to do with anything, Lieutenant? I think I remember reading about them in the news bit. If I recall the story correctly, they came from some shady planet in the far northern reaches of the Rulian Git Republic. We're just normal people off duty. We're all the same. Regulations don't go away just because you're off, you aren't on duty. Besides, Lieutenant, we were lo when we launch from port, we are technically always on duty. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt, but what are you? Huh? Annoying and disrespectful. She meant me. Oh, oh, would you like some ice for that burn? Oh, I'm sorry, that came out wrong. I've never met any one of your species before. I can't remember what you're called. They're called Draymonds. They originate from the planet Onathion. Oh, Onathon. Onathon. It's Northern Real, right? Ralton, our new lieutenant and her ilk are loyalists to the Empire. She's right. My home is located just north of the capital world. I even once got to visit the city of Emerald once there. And as ex an exasperated sigh from Sol tells me that I didn't conceal my interest very well. Still, you don't meet too many people who have heard the melodies of the Emerald Winds. How did you gain entry? Only the loot players themselves are even permitted to enter their halls. My clan leader nominated me as a loot player one year. 
Every year, the clan sends someone there to resonate with the emerald crystals and performs the ballad of the distant dreams. You've performed the ballad of distant dreams? Great. We're not getting rid of her now, are we? Soul must never have heard the heart-touching ballad of the distant dreams. Even though I've never heard it in person, the soft melody plays in the happiest places of my memory. It's a soft song of hope and loss, of what once was and what shall be. No matter what Soul thinks of the player, if he could just hear the song, he could be swayed by it too. I'm assuming she's humming it. That's it! Wow! You really do know it! Of course I do. It's so beautiful! I love it, but... I kind of suck as a loop player, and I can't beat my wings to the rhythm for the ballad. Oh. Big surprise. But a warrior has to be both a master of the sword and of the culture. So I practice it anyway. The elder stresses that a lot to me during my training. But a real warrior doesn't bother with such weaknesses. Did they also stress respecting your elders? Not really. Wow, you are like a blonde with blue hair, blue wings, and a blue tail. Big surprise. Are you saying I should be calling you Grandpa? I would eat my heart out with nothing more than a toothpick and claim any family relationship with you. Speaking of food, why don't we go get some and get to know each other a little better? That would be awesome, Alphonse. Kylie and I were just about to sit down and have dinner. On second thought, I'm not hungry. Come on, Grandpa. How am I supposed to find my way to my quarters afterwards without a guide? She's with Moonfollow. Take her there afterwards, Zuri. Hey, Soul, don't go, please. I want to hang out and catch up, but I also want to get to understand everyone better. I solemnly swear that I won't accidentally knock you again, Major Hackett. Fine. Try to keep it refined in. All of you. I don't want to have to clean up the lounge again after someone managed to prove that you can stick spaghetti to the ceiling. <laughs> I felt like something I did in uh, high school, but that was more of a major food fight. I still think you did something to your noodles. It's a cooking technique, lizard brain. When the noodle gets too close to being ready and the starch gets sticky, you are able to test it by seeing if it'll stick to the wall. And if it doesn't, it isn't ready? Precisely. That makes sense. Why couldn't you just said that instead of insulting me, Soul? It's Major Hackett, and I was just starting obvious, stating obvious facts. You are a lizard. You have a brain. Do you not? I am not some desert lizard. I'm going to report you to Commander again. But by the time you all stop fighting, the food's going to get cold again. even nastier when it's cold. If I say I forgive you, could you just drop it? Sorry. You nearly knocked out Natalie and insulted me. But I'll let it slide this one time. Let's just hurry up and eat. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Come, there is plenty to go around. Inside the small room is an ovoid table with a few gray and black chairs surrounding it. Actual chairs with proper covering, mind you. Not the ripped fighter ejector seats I had to scrounge up. To the side, I can see the synthesizer for making the usual mush. As well as a few other devices. An oven, a refrigeration machine, and some limited space for food preparation. I'm glad someone added those machines. Because the force is so diverse and every species has their own taste and nutritional requirements, the synthesizer needs to be able to adapt to everyone. Which means it produces some rather bland and unoriginal food, if you can call it that. Still, when I haven't had anything to eat all day, I'll take whatever I can get. Zuri motions over to a seat next to her with a mirthful pat on the back. I take it, eager to discover the inner workings of someone who has seen such a marvelous place. Spaghetti with Alfredo sauce? Were you expecting me to visit? 
expecting? No, I was just hoping your favorite would convince you to stay. Well, it seems at least one thing is going right. Alphonse has a joyful smile on his face, and Kylie seems to be losing the edge she had while when Soul showed up. I think. No, I know Soul is wrong about this. If the rest of the crew are as interesting as these people are, I think this may be an acceptable post. The standard issue blue plate sits in front of me for a nary for nary a second before I pounce. Though there may be no wild creatures that may try to steal from me anymore, habits don't die easy. Natalie, can I ask you a personal question? It's major. <clears throat> Forget it. I'm tired of arguing with all you. Whoo! Thanks. If she is thanking Soul for finally giving up, or me, I dare not ask. Why did you join the force? Ah, uh, the age-old question of deep space adventures. Well, I was hoping for something like if I had a romantic relationship with Soul or something. That one is embarrassing. Why don't you tell her yours, Zuri? It makes her a little bit more at ease. Oh, quote, quote, pro. Quid pro quo. I joined right out of mandatory schooling. When counseling time came to discuss job options, he didn't get a single word out before I told him I wanted to join the force. Why is that? Because if I didn't define my, if I don't defend my home, who will? My homeland has given me so much to be thankful for. This is the least I can do to repay them. I had so many offers to join professional ratchet ball, but turned them all down. I even had an offer to join Onathon, Onathon's Olympic track team. I still don't believe that one. I might not look like it, but I'm one of the fastest runners you'll see. Good. I always like my security officers to be able to run away really fast. Or to those who need my protection. Alphonse could not have been more wrong. Zuri's reason is so honorable and prideful that it makes mine look so ugly. I joined because I always wanted to work on fighters. They were always so fast and so cool when I saw them zipping through the air and duster station. Why don't you try to become a fighter pilot instead? Soul was one. Well, well, I was better at fixing than I was at flying. What she's saying is that she couldn't see over the dashboard. They don't make seats for my height, so I was rejected. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not. We'd be flyer garbage scout with nothing but synth food to eat. That's what she wants to hear. That's her dreams are lost and poor and thin your stomach. I didn't mean it like that way, Kylie. I know. Still, doesn't sound any less offending. Why don't you tell us why you joined, Soul? Why do you care? Now he already knows why. We had this conversation before. I would like to know. You never tell us anything about yourself because he's a dickwad. Because you don't need to know. <laughs> I'd like to know more about our executive officer. If you don't tell them, I will. Fine, fix my hand. I joined because of a program that allows veterans to get special treatments and trade deals. I plan on becoming a transporter. Um, that was nothing like the romantic story he told me. I don't see you being those old fat pilots hauling cargo. It's such a funny picture. Mm. Well, there you have it, Nat. What's your reason? Time to admit the truth. If I don't, I could start sowing the seed of distrust in their minds. I was bored. Bored? This is so embarrassing, but I really just got bored one day and said, I could just go to the university and become a chemist, but that's boring. I decided to sign up on a whim. But you stuck around to be the best and prove your mind strength to the universe. It's not why you would do something, but that's why you did it. Exactly. <clears throat> what you do here now is what matters, not how you get here. Soul flashes me a small smile. He knows the truth. 
I came here because my family is incredibly poor. I couldn't afford the university, so I had to find other ways to become the best. There is nothing I hate more than those sad smiles I get when people discover my poor heritage. They don't know what it's like to fight from the ground up on nothing more than your heart. That is why I must continue to be the best. I will conquer peace for K Katagia, be the hero, and prove myself to the universe. I eat my food quickly and ask Sol to take me back to my room. When I get tired, I get philosophical. My first day is not the place to let people become that way. This is your room. <coughs> this is your room. If you need anything, you have my Freck. Don't be afraid to call me for anything. Thanks for showing me around, Sol. It's nice having a friend on the ship again. Good night. Good night, Sol. So this is where I'm going to spend the next few months. I doubt I'll be visiting this room much when there's so much work to be done. It is just a tad cramped, but I think I can make a good life here. The crew seems friendly. I doubt my mission is mundane. And I don't have to worry about waking up to giant rats gnawing on my computers. I glanced over at my roommate's bed, but she seems to be fast asleep. The commander said she was Captain Moonfollow? I'll have to introduce myself to her in the morning. It is hard to maneuver around in the darkness, so I relent on unpacking and head to bed. Tomorrow, I get to start my job as a hero. This is going to be perfect. What the? Is now the bird stuck in the ventilation again? No. As I look around, I remember that I've been freed from the hellhole. Somebody is banging on my door with a ludicrous amount of force. That doesn't sound like it would be Soul. He said that he was going to meet me here in 20 minutes. He's always punctual, but... Coming! I quickly throw on a fresh uniform and go to open the door. <clears throat> the door slides open and an angry-looking kitsune with bright pink hair tied down two drills storms in without much of a greeting. Where's breakfast? What? You heard me, Faye. I'm not Faye. My mistake. You're not my minion. No, no. I'm not. Still, you seem like you could make a decent meal. You're my new minion. This is making less and less sense as the moment ticks on. I glance at her shoulder and notice the thin stripe of a lieutenant. Suddenly, I'm starting to understand Sol's annoyance. Excuse me, lieutenant, but... But I'm hungry. Chop, chop. I'm a major. You know your ranks, right? Behind me, I can hear the rustling of sheets and the loud flop of someone falling out of bed. I want to turn and investigate, but the uppity lieutenant is looking me over with merchandise. Looking me over like merchandise. Not much to look at, but you've got spirit. I think you'll be acceptable in the ranks of my minions. Lieutenant, bragging into a superior officer, barging into a superior officer's room. Do you know who I am? No. I'm Kika Star, daughter of President of Earth, Julian Star, and the hero of Zeon. We're on the Nemros. I know that. And I do not care who your father is. Decorum is critical for all crew members. <laughs> then who's going to get me breakfast? I have no idea, but I know he's going to get my breakfast this morning. What? You can't be seriously ordering me to get you breakfast. I am. Chop chop. That's an unlawful order. Breakfast or paperwork. Those are your two options. On second thought, I don't think I want you as a minion. So, you choose paperwork. I'm going to have just arrived on the ship, but I'm rested enough to do some writing. <laughs> Kika, I brought breakfast. Oh, is that a guy? Finally, someone reasonable. I thought you said you were going to meet me at the lounge. I kind of slept in. Captain Moonfollow, I presume? Uh-huh. Oh, it is a guy. It is a girl. <laughs> Her glassy blue eyes and constant yawning... Tell me the story of a girl who isn't quite all there in this morning. It's nice to meet you. I'm Natalie Fuxiel, your new roommate. I hope I didn't wake you when I moved in. You moved in? Sorry, I didn't help. That's 
That's why I have to beat on the door so hard. She doesn't sleep so much as she sleeps into a coma. <laughs> it's good to know I won't disturb you when you sleep, Lieutenant Star, was it? Soon to be captain. I'm not much of a heavy sleeper. This is your one warning. Fink, did you make the Danish like I asked? Danish? Why you wanted toast? Whatever, let me see it. Here you go, Major. Book seal, was it? Are you making fun of me? You said breakfast or paperwork. There, all better now. Let's go, Faye. You can make me a Danish. I made today's breakfast. It's your turn. It's still today. Arrgh. Aw. They go walking off without paying me any attention. See, she's been that way since I was upperclassman at the academy. The lieutenant got under my skin, but I don't think you can call her a mutt. No, Moonfall is a backstabbing mutt. Tika is just puffed up a house cat. Look at the toast in my hand. No point in letting it go to waste. The meeting is in 20 minutes. Are you prepared? It's in two hours and 20 minutes. No, I double checked with Rasuna this morning. Are you saying you haven't even read your orders yet? I jam the toast in my mouth and spread out of the room down the hall. I can salvage this. Really, I can. 20 minutes later, to the second, I'm standing before the assembly crew with a page of hastily scribbled notes and an anxious looking soul. Oh dear. Hi, Stan. You're looking fabulous today. Doesn't he know I've got this? There's nothing to be worried about. Everyone is assembled, Major Pooksiel. You may commence. And time to hack at 0800 Fleet Standard Time. Welcome, everyone. I am Major Natalie Pooksiel. I will be briefing you on the newest mission for the KSS Nimros. The operation will go by codename Runaway Book. Three days ago, an all-points bulletin was issued for a Markian Institute research team that failed to report it at their designated times. The team is currently considered missing in action. While this would normally not require a response or final report for Dr. Nimian Sunflower, the team's xenotechnician suspected that the recovered artifact may hold some importance to modern transportation. Question. How many ancient civilizations managed to make something that we have to worry about? They're old and... ancient. Just because they're old doesn't mean that they aren't technologically advanced. Then why aren't they still here? There are a lot of reasons. They could have been wiped out in a war, some sort of viral plague, or simply moved to on to other parts of the universe. Precisely. Marakia isn't filling us on the details on what the expedition was supposed to uncover. So we'll be doing a lot of legwork. They probably just found some old traffic sign, but command feels important enough to warn a follow-up. Odds are we will find them sitting there, dumb and happy. But I'm not taking any risks. Investigation work. This wouldn't be the first time, would it, Faye? Nope. Our ground team at any potential site will consist of Major Poop Seal, Major Hackett, Captain Moonfollow, Lieutenant Zuri, and Colonel Nelson. What? I must agree with Star. The team lineup will not do. How so? Would it not make more sense to keep the doctor here? Should I become incapacitated on the field, I will no longer be able to render life-saving aid. For the sake of those who may be injured in the line of noble duty, I beseech you not to risk such a valuable asset. You just don't want to risk your neck. I'm trained in first aid. I'm qualified first responder. See, Commander... Does our swap not make sense? Lieutenant Starr, your father has given me specific orders to keep you out of harm's way. Unless I can assess that you are in no danger, I cannot authorize the swap. But if there isn't an element of danger, what's the point of going on in the adventure? Military necessity. But risking a high-ranking officer with valuable training is... I dare not believe that. Believe it. Everyone, sit down. Continue, Puxio. We're going to know. We're going to the last known location, and we'll attempt to trace their location from there. I don't know what's going to face any danger, but our current knowledge is limited. 
Wandering into the unknown always brings a certain level of risk. Flood Officer Meiji, what is the status of our ship and supplies? Everything is working within approved levels, except a few minor fruit comfort things. So the aft bathroom is nothing to be fixed for a while. Is that what you're saying? Supplies aren't as good. We got shorted on our lap on a lot of our order. We got roughly a solid month's worth of food and fuel. Then we'll make do with what we have. You will file another report on the on to this fleet support. I will take care of it. Thanks, Major. I'm not pleased with command subpar performance any more than our crew. I don't I don't have double standards for my subordinates compared to my superiors. Thanks. I think. Crew, prepare for jump. Major Pooksio, upload your conditions to the nav station of Lieutenant Star. Major Hackett, ready the ship. But if you have a complaint, voice it later. I want the ship ready to jump in five minutes at our course in three. But now Lieutenant Star. Fine. Come on. The rude lieutenant grabs my arm and violently yanks me to the position on the far left side. Give them to me. Hmm? The coordinates. If Sol wants it in three, I have to do it in two. I click the transfer button and watch the file pop up on the navigation station. In a heartbeat, Kika has pounced onto the station, her fingers flying like hawks as she manipulates the screen. Why do you have to do it in two? If he said three, I'm sure he's fine with three. Because that's standard. If I'm going to be the best of the best, he will become a hero by simply doing the bare minimum. And because we do, that's why you're all going to be my minion someday. She's kind of a snotty little crap. The best thing of things are typically done with the worst of intentions. Still, my mission is more likely to succeed with someone who has the drive and motivation. <clears throat> Something bugs me about watching her type and draw so fast. Is the ship navigation virtual intelligence not working? Hard to concentrate when you're babbling. Just trying to get a better feel of the ship. Whatever. It works just fine. It just suffers from limitations of all the VI. They're programmers. Exactly. My methods are faster and have way better results. Theirs are paranoid. Wait. You're not flying us into a star, are you? No, but I might be flying us through a pirate space. It's not like we're going like it's not like we're going to stop our sh shift jump and let them attack us. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Natalie, over here. Trust is a limited commodity, especially when I feel the best way to describe her is the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Sol is standing by small, rather uncomfortable in the back. Next to Ziri. Making the jump. And make it a little rough, so strap in and keep your emergency pressurization device under your chair turned on. Isn't there anything I can do? Trust me. I'll make this a smooth one. Just sit back and watch. I'm not worried about it. The ship accidents making the jump to subspace nowadays are rare. I'm, all, I'm always a little jumpy when we make the jump. You can't do anything... To fix a bad jump sitting back here in the baby seats. Why does she have to vocalize my fears? All it would take is one little mistake by a hasty lieutenant or a slip of Sol's hand. We could be dead in a millisecond. I love space travel. The science behind getting a ship into space between space is amazing. That doesn't make it any less dangerous or frightening. Still, I do feel better knowing that I'm not the only one who has a tad skittish about this. Zuri's all right. How do you cope with it? I'm not scared or anything, just curious. <laughs> night, night! Huh? Zuri closes her eyes and snuggles into her restraints. Sleep? How the hell can anyone sleep at a time like this? Between the chaos, the noise, there's no chance of sleep. Zuri? Yet, yeah, there she goes. That's talent. I wish I had that talent. I would love to fall asleep just on a whim. All crew, sound off. Flight station ready. Navigation plotted and good to go. Engineering all green. Non-essential crew are strapped in and secured. The Nimrods is prepared for jump at your word, Commander. Engage jump. Roger, engaging jump drive. Under my seat, I can feel the 
deck shift from a slow, steady vibration shift to a much louder, much more violent rattle. The war space generator beginning to charge. The massive power required to tear a ship a rift in normal space is astronomical. If any of the capacitors were suddenly explode, there wouldn't even be an atom left of me floating in the air. I close my eyes, wishing I could fall asleep like Zuri. No amount of personal brilliance can help me if the man- manufacturer skimped on something or Kylie didn't put her best into her checks. The volume finally crescendos and the capacitors are charged to the required levels. Next comes the part that scares me the most. The power is transferred into the Bellinio crystal to pull the ship into subspace. Bellinio serves as a focal point. Without it, the energy used to break the holes of the universe would be useless. The material is rare, mined in three locations galaxy-wide. I doubt we have a spare. Stop thinking about everything that could go wrong, Nat. If you explode, you won't have to feel it. Ship drive stabilized. My ship controls. Your ship, your controls. Advance into the void. Moving forward. It begins. I like the music of this game. It's really fun. I open my eyes to the bright lights of the bridge. I feel groggy and disoriented. Did I manage to fall asleep? The bridge is emptier than when I closed them. I must have blacked out for a little bit. Miracles do happen, I suppose. Good morning! How long was I out? Two hours. We're still in shift. Ugh. That first shift nap is always the hardest to recover from. Why don't you take a moment to walk around? It always helps me. Can I? Yep. You'll have to be buckled up for the entry and exit of subspace. It feels like someone beat me with a rubber mallet. I think I'll need to get better sleep tonight in case my water intake, increase my water intake. I think I'll go talk to some of the crew. That should help clear my mind. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to stop it here. Oh, shoot. I can't. Choices, choices, choices. Maybe. Hold on. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to think about this one. This could be a life-changing experience for me. So, I'm going to hold off on this one, and I will see y'all people next time. I love y'all. Peace out. Stay beautiful.